Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be body confidence related and kind of like womanhood and how womanhood is related to body confidence. I got this video idea from a video Kaylin Nicholson did probably a month or so ago at this point. But I recently listened to the, that, well, it was a podcast, but it was on, but I watched it on YouTube. So, yeah, on her Coffee Talk channel. And it got me thinking. And I'll leave her video linked down below because hers is a little bit different. Hers is talking about growing through womanhood and motherhood without a mom. I can't speak on that as I grew up with a mom that I am that I was very close to and I am still very close to so but the video got me thinking so I kind of wanted to talk about it on here and I kind of wanted to address some random comments and DMs I've gotten as well in this video while I'm talking about this because it kind of fits into the same thing. So if you are new here, I am Jamie. This is Simply Jalen and I will post pretty much anything on this channel but I'm trying to lean lately more towards chronic illness, day in the lifestyle content. So yeah, if you have not done so already, hit the red subscribe button down below and give this video a thumbs up. So. Let's, without further ado, let's just get started. I don't know how I really want to start this video, but when Kayla Nicholson made a, brought up of how she wasn't really confident in her body and how she thought maybe that was because she didn't have a motherly figure. And it got me thinking, how much is your body confidence actually based off your mom? Is it based is it based off how she felt about herself? So do you improve on that or do you copy it and do you go towards like if your mom's not confident in her body, do you go the other way and you're not confident in yours or are you the complete opposite and you are completely confident in your body. That's basically what I'm going to talk about in this video as well as kind of addressing some I've got some random DMs, a few random emails, and a few comments that I have chosen not to post on the videos that I've gotten them on because I just don't want to look at them every time I look at that video or every time I get a new comment on that video because even though I am 30 years old and I am confident in my body for the most part I am allowed to have my insecurities basically that's as simple as that I'm allowed to be insecure but I'm going to start with addressing the DMs a lot of people have noticed that in the last few months I have lost a lot of weight and then I've slowly started to put some weight back on. And you're not wrong, but I don't like it being pointed out and I don't like being body shamed as somebody who, I've done these videos before and I've kind of talked about it. I've not always been confident in my body. When I was in middle school and high school and even in the college, I wasn't necessarily happy with what I saw in the mirror. I thought I was too skinny or I thought I was too fat. So, and I just wasn't happy with it. I think every girl goes through that, especially in the teenage years. But I did really bad. I started, I'm not to say, not starving myself but I started limiting myself on food about 
11 to 13 years old. When I was set, when I was 16 years old, I was 75 pounds. And a healthy weight for a 16 year old of my height would have been 90 to 100 pounds. So yeah, I was quite a bit underweight. And I was doing it to myself because I thought I was fat. And then I would randomly have days where I was just starving and I would eat and eat and eat. And if I would gain weight from that, I would think I was fat, so I would go back to limiting myself. I've talked about that before here on my channel. I've talked about it a little bit on Instagram because I have gotten some comments over the years, like not on YouTube, but I've gotten them on Instagram, Facebook, and then I've gotten some directly to my face or that weren't supposed to be about me but you could tell the woman was talking about me I just don't like being body shamed when you do not know somebody's story like you don't understand if you don't know anything about me and what I've been through do not tell me I'm skinny do not tell me I am thin do not call me a rail and do not look at me and go you can eat whatever you want because you're so small. Some people don't have that luxury. You know what? I can eat whatever I want because I work out and I exercise and I take care of my body. That doesn't mean I'm coming home every day and having, it doesn't mean I'm sitting at home every day eating a bag of Doritos, then eating a pan of brownies, and then going to the gym and working out and then coming home and eating six cupcakes and 10 ice cream cones. I'm not doing that. Yes, I am naturally skinny based off genetics, metabolism, just pure on luck, I guess, and the fact that I work my butt off when I work out. I'm not killing myself when I work out, but I put in a decent amount of effort, even with my chronic illness. When I can work out, I do, because there have been there has been a point in my chronic illness where I have been unable to work out, and when I was not able to work out, I hated it because I. But at the same time, I wasn't gaining weight because at the same time that I was. Because I had no appetite. It's just, it basically goes, don't talk about people, don't make comments or assumptions when you do not know. That's my biggest thing. I do not like to be judged either behind my back or to my face for that matter about what I look like if you don't know. And that kind of, that's what's been coming up, up lately. Like in November and December, I had a really bad cyclic vomiting syndrome flare. For a month, I could not eat. And if I was eating something, it was not lasting long before it was coming right back up. So I went from 115 pounds in November to 105 by the end of December I was I was down 10 pounds and people had noticed that and I expected people to notice that because I noticed it because my pants weren't fitting my shirts weren't fitting and I just hated it because I was finally at a comfortable weight. Like, I'm typically between 110 and 115. That's my, that's the weight where I want to stay. That's the weight where I'm feeling good about myself and I'm feeling good physically. And I, 
maintain that weight mainly because I do have muscle. But my doctor has also said 100, 100 to 115 pounds is healthy for your height. So he said as long as you're working out and a lot of it is muscle, and it is, then he's fine with, I'm, he's fine with me being in that weight, and I'm fine with me being at that weight because I feel good at that weight. But I'm typically between 110 and 115, depending on how bloated I am, because, because of all my chronic illnesses, I bloat really easy. Then when I started gaining weight, like when people were saying, well, you lost weight, it wasn't, I had one nasty comment ask me about what drug I was on to help me lose the weight. And I deleted the comment the second I saw it. Because, no, we're not doing that here. Then that same person sent me a DM on Instagram telling me, you deleted my comment from YouTube, but we all know you're on a drug to lose the weight. I, so I deleted it, and I think I actually blocked that person on Instagram because I am not dealing with nasty comments like that. I did not take a drug to lose the weight. I have a chronic illness, and because of that chronic illness, I was unable to eat. So I lost 10 pounds in a month. And then in January, when I started to put it back on, till about March, well no, yeah, about mid-March, because I had another flare in March. So from January to mid-March, I put on, I put back on, okay, so my camera died, so I had to switch spots. But from January to mid-March, I put on my 10 pounds. Then I started getting comments from people. You've gained weight. Why are you gaining weight? What are you doing that's causing you to gain weight? And like, that's not bad, but I'm not dealing with, I, like I said before, I'm not gonna deal with comments about my weight. I'm going to address it on here because I'm sick and tired of getting the comments. But I'm not dealing with it anymore. So if I get a comment about my weight, about how skinny I am or how fat I am when I'm not fat, I'm healthy, then it's getting deleted immediately. Because I had one comment come up. that. You got fat really quick. What are you doing? What are you eating? Are you, have you changed your diet that much? And I'm thinking, I didn't think the 10 pounds was that noticeable because it's not like it's all in one area. It's my entire body. So I didn't think, I don't think I look fat. My clothes are fitting the way they typically do and I feel good. So, yes, while I have gained weight, I feel good, and I'm not fat. So the people who are calling me fat now because I've put on my weight, <laughs> I'm not fat. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, that say, there used to be a post on Facebook that said, I wish I was as fat as I was when I thought I was fat. Because I don't want to be 75 pounds again. But to be 19 years old and to be 100 pounds, yes, I would love to do that <laughs> again. But at the same time, I am 30 years old. I'm 115 pounds. Most of my body is now muscle because I work out. And I'm happy with that. But at the same time, I do have chronic illnesses, so my weight will go up or down depending on what chronic illness is acting up that day. Like, there are days I am closer to 120, 125 pounds because I'm bloated. But that's just, that's just womanhood and chronic illness. So, yeah. But that leads me into 
how much of your body confidence is actually based off of your mother? And I kind of found this interesting because growing up, my mom didn't really work out. She didn't eat, a, she ate junk, but she ate healthy too. And I knew she, she was never, I'm not saying she wasn't ever not confident in her body because I do remember as she got into her 40s and I got out of high school, her talking about how she wished she didn't have her muffin top. But my mom never called herself fat. I don't ever remember my mom calling herself fat as I was growing up. And I don't ever remember my mom starving herself as I was growing up either. So it makes me wonder because when I was in middle school and high school, yes, I starved myself and I didn't like my body, but I think that was just your typical teenage girl thing because all my friends were doing it too. It just wasn't, it wasn't just me. All my friends were doing it too. So it's like, it, that's normal as at that age. I hate to say that, but it is. Now, if you're to the point where you're an unhealthy, like, I was talking to my doctor about this a while ago because we were going through my medical records and he said, you were extremely low in weight in your teenage years. And I said, yeah, I know that. He said, you should have been tested, you should have been evaluated for an eating disorder at that weight or at least evaluated for an illness that would cause you to lose weight and I said yeah he said you never were I said no never the doctor has never once mentioned me being so small nothing and now I'm seeing this doctor now and he's like why weren't you evaluated for that? He's like, there's no point to evaluate you now. Because now I think what it is, is you're at a healthy weight and then your body goes through these things and you just lose a whole bunch of weight. But he said, if you ever start starving yourself on purpose, and you start dropping weight drastically and you end up down 20, 30 pounds, we're going to have to start considering something. I'm thinking, okay, fine, whatever. Because I'm not at that point. And I don't, I'm not saying I could never get back to that point. But I don't think I will. Because I am confident in my body. But I'm 30 years old and I've had years, <laughs> I've had at least a decade of learning to be happy with the body that I'm in. And I think a lot of that does come from I watched my mom be happy with the body that she's in. I watched my grandma be happy with the body that she's in. And then there's the whole thing that goes along with the makeup. Like, I don't wear a whole lot of makeup. Like, I'm not wearing makeup now. Mainly because my hormonal breakouts lately have been horrible. And I don't want to put makeup on top of it and make them worse. But I don't wear a lot of makeup. I wear makeup when we go out, when I go out somewhere. But other than that, I don't really wear a whole lot of makeup. I'm not a daily makeup person. My mom's never been a daily makeup person. My grandma is. But I've never been, and my mom's never been. So, I'm comfortable in my own skin. Now, 15 years ago, it was a different story. 15 years ago, I was piling on makeup. But my friends were doing it. We were in high school, and we wanted to look pretty, and we wanted to look older, and <laughs> it's like all that stuff. But now, I don't care. I like my makeup, I like what I look like in my makeup, but I'm not going to pile it on every day 
just to wash it off. Because being pretty ain't pretty. And then there's the whole other concept of like there's body confidence and there's being comfortable in your own skin and there's being comfortable without makeup. But then there's this thing that irks me. As a woman, we have to do things that are not the most comfortable and are not, and we go through things. Like, think about it. As a woman, you have a period. It's not fun. It's not dainty to any extent. But are you ashamed of it? And I'm not, but I wasn't brought up to be ashamed of it. And neither was my mother, and my grandmother wasn't either. My grandmother's aunt told her about what, and now, my dad, my grandma is 70. So you gotta take the, look at the age. 60 something years ago, it was not something you talked about. My grandma knew what her period was at nine years old because her aunt told her what it was and I remember this story because I remember my grandma telling me that my great-grandmother her mother got so mad at her sister my grandma's aunt for telling her what a period was because she didn't need to know about that yet because she wasn't old enough to know about that yet so and Caitlin Nicholson kind of brought this up too if you don't have a good relationship with your mother or depending on how your mother was with this stuff what is your relationship with your body and does it affect it and I truly think it does simply based off several women that I've known like when I was taking Zumba classes there was a woman the same woman who made comments about my weight that you, if you've been here a while and you're not new, you've seen the little crop tanks that I work out in. You've seen, I occasionally I work out in biker shorts or little, or skorts. And there's nothing wrong with that. But every time I would wear a pair of pants that might be a little bit see-through or a skort or a pair of shorts or a crop top, this woman would make nasty faces at me and make nasty comments. And the more and more she did it, the more I realized that it was, wasn't was because it was me. She, it was because she wasn't comfortable in her own skin, in her own body. But at the same time, how do you... And now, I'm going to add, this woman is closer to my grandmother's age. She's in her 60s. But my question is, how do you get to be in your 60s and have children and go through what we do as women with having periods and having gynecological exams and having babies like I don't have any babies but this woman had kids so how do you get to that point and still be so uncomfortable not only of your of, not only of your body but of somebody else's is it because of how our mothers teach us? Like, these things are not, com periods are not comfortable. Um, it's not comfortable going to a doctor and getting completely naked and going through those exams. But we do it as women because we have to. But every time this woman would make a comment about me not basic because one time she looked at me and said you don't have any pants on you don't have a top on because it, it was a it was a tank top but it was a sports bra at the same time and I said this is a bra with a tank this is a tank top with a bra built in so I have a bra and a tank top on well you don't have any pants on because I had shorts on and they were maybe maybe to my they were a little bit below my knee, or not a little bit below my knee, but quite, or uh, not a below my knee, but above my knee, quite a bit above my knee. They weren't showing my butt or anything, but yeah. 
But this woman kept looking at me, you have no clothes on. And I said, I said, I have clothes on. Well, you're not supposed to go out in public like that. That's underwear. I said, this is not underwear. These are shorts and a tank top with a built-in bra. So I, just, I said it and I kind of let it go. But at the same time, that comment will forever haunt me. But at the same time, I know this woman's daughter, and this woman's daughter is so confident in herself, especially in her body. It's hilarious. She'll go into a workout class, even as a bigger person, in short shorts and a tank top. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you're comfortable in it and you're not showing anything to anybody, why does it matter what you wear? But it's just kind of funny because this woman's daughter is the complete opposite of this woman when it comes to what you should wear in public, how you should present yourself, and being ashamed of your body. Because I honestly think this woman was ashamed of her body and that's why she always felt the need to shame me. Because even if it wasn't what I was wearing, if we were talking about eating something, she would make comments about, well, you're just so skinny. And I'm thinking, I haven't, that's, I'm 30 years old. Being able to eat whatever I wanted to eat and not gain weight died the second I turned 21. When I turned 21, I couldn't just eat a bag full of chips and a pan full of brownies anymore and not gain weight. At that point, I had to start working to keep it off if I was going to eat that way. And I don't eat that way. And honestly, with my chronic illnesses now, I can't eat that way. But it's just, I will never understand how you can be so ashamed of your body and what it does, but yet you have children and you've been through this stuff. Like, I'm 30 years old, and I don't have children, but I have been through some stuff with my body, and I am confident enough to say that I am confident in my body, and I am proud that it supports me as much as it does, even though it doesn't support me 100% the way that a healthy person's does, even though as much as I wish it would, I don't get that, but I still love my body. Because, but I think a lot of that might also be, it might not be from how I grew up and how my mom showed her confidence or anything in her body, but it might just be from when you've been through what I have been with my body from the time I was 16 years old. I got sick at 16. I have been sick for 15 years now. And, well, almost 15 years. And I'm confident in my body. I am comfortable in my body. And while I am a woman and I have to go through uncomfortable things, I'm not ashamed of my body. I'm not ashamed of the parts that I have. I'm not ashamed of what I look like when I'm naked. I'm, of course I have stuff I would love to change about my body, but everybody does. But I'm not beating myself up and I'm not beating myself down for it. And at the same time, I am not beating other women down for what they look like and what their bodies look like because I'm not comfortable or because I'm ashamed of my own body. That's basically the point I wanted to make in this video. As much as I think our body confidence does come from our mother, because I think a little bit of it does, a lot of it also comes from how you change generation to generation based off how you were taught. And if you were taught to be ashamed of your body by somebody who just clearly is not comfortable in their skin or comfortable in their body, then you're either going to be extremely confident or you're going to go the exact other way and you're not going to be confident at all.
But my family is quite progressive when it comes to body confidence, womanhood, and how you look and feel in your own skin. What we were told very young, okay, you are a woman, or you are a girl, you are going to experience this, this is going to make you a woman, and then you're going to go through this, this, and this. And I think because I had that at such a young age, it allowed me to be confident in my body, but at the same time, learn how to be confident in my body. I wasn't told that I had to be, but through the experiences I had in my teenage years, I learned to be confident in my body. I learned to be happy with where I am. And that's, it's as simple as that. If you're, you don't have to be comfortable with me wearing short shorts and a sports bra to work out in. But if I'm comfortable in it, you do not have to tell me that I should not, then you don't have the right to tell me that I'm not allowed to work out in that. If I'm not breaking any rules, why does it matter what I work out in? You have no right to tell me that I need to wear 10 tons of makeup if I feel confident enough not to. Again, you don't have the right to comment on my weight whether it's weight loss or weight gain, if you do not understand what I go through and if you don't live in my body and go through it yourself. So, I hope this video wasn't all over the place and I hope it made sense. I guess I'll find out when I edit, but that's going to be it for this kind of random sit down chat about body confidence and womanhood. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've not done so already, hit the red subscribe button down below. Not all my videos are like this. <laughs> I promise you that. Other than that, thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.